Hey guys, it's Cam for Investors Underground. Welcome to lesson one of eight in the intermediate series. For those of you guys who've been following the beginner series, you've probably been waiting in great anticipation for this video to come out. We got through so much in the beginner series that there didn't really seem to be such an urgency to get into the intermediate or advanced just yet. However, we did make a commitment to everyone that we'd start putting it out, you know, between trading for ourselves, running the Investors Underground chat room and creating content and the right lessons for members. Sometimes we can be a little stretched with our time, but we've got a killer lesson for you guys today. As I was going through the prep work for this presentation or webinar or lesson, whatever you want to call it, I really feel like this could be one of the best one hours of content that we've ever created for free for people to much better understand where they're at with their trading and perhaps make some adjustments accordingly. So the subject matter of this video today is why is trading the hardest thing you will ever do? I'm not trying to be a buzzkill right off the bat, but during the last decade of running the service, we've noticed that there are unique struggles that traders face at every level in this game. Whether you're a complete newbie, whether you're more of a beginner or intermediate, or whether you're an advanced trader, you face different sets of challenges all along the way. So we're going to be exploring some of that and the best ways to negate those challenges or overcome them during this webinar. So why do we think it was important to have this webinar today? And why we think that trading is the hardest thing you'll ever do? <laughs> well, having been around this industry for a decent number of years, there seems to be a pretty common pattern of seeing lots of struggling and directionless traders attempting to do something they have no idea how to do. I think this is a bigger problem than people really understand. So I'll try and make it as simple as possible. When you're trying to teach yourself something new, something that you don't know how to do yet, not only are you playing student, but you're also playing teacher at the same time. So at face value, that might not sound so crazy to some people here. But let me give you an example of just how absurd it is to try and do this. Let's imagine that instead of trying to teach yourself something you don't know, you were trying to teach someone else. Well, it would become pretty apparent very quickly that you had no idea what the subject matter was about and your lessons would be full of fluff. And not only would the person who you're trying to teach not really learn anything, it could be even worse in that they may be internalizing incorrect information that you're giving to them, which might be very difficult to unlearn in the future. So in that same example, if you swap out the teaching someone else something that you don't know to teaching yourself something that you don't know, it becomes a little more understandable how crazy it is to try and attempt to do this. I'm going to talk about this a little more in the next couple of slides. But the other thing that we really wanted to hit on in this webinar is that we see lots of traders who are making progress in their craft, but are facing new sets of problems that they don't know how to address. And we're really going to get into how at different levels of trading experience, whether it's newbie, beginner, intermediate, or advanced, there are different sets of problems that present themselves to these traders. So in this webinar, we're really going to spend a bit of time trying to help you identify where you're at in this game and have an honest conversation with yourself about how you might think there'd be an appropriate way for you to progress through these challenges. So for the purpose of this webinar, we're going to split traders up into four kind of categories of experience levels, newbies, beginners, intermediates, and advanced. So we're going to go into this in more detail in the next couple of slides, but from a bird's eye view, you know, newbies don't know what they don't know. And very often they've got bad plans because they have no idea how to set plans because they don't know the subject matter. Beginners have some idea of what's what, but no ability to be able to execute on it because they know the subject matter from a theoretical standpoint, but not on a practical standpoint or something that they are able to pull the trigger on. Intermediates often have good ideas and some ability to be able to execute. However, they lack the discipline or consistency in executing the strategy because they don't have the experience or conviction to be able to adhere to the set of rules that they've laid out for themselves that they've learned through, you know, coming up through beginner and newbie -dom. And advanced traders have issues with scale, you know, emotions. At the highest level, you may be experiencing performance anxiety, comparisons to others, 
and a whole set of problems that open up once you're at the top of the game trying to stay at the top. So now you've had a look at a bird's eye kind of view, let's have a look at each of these level of traders individually. We're going to get started with newbie issues. So as I alluded to earlier, newbies are trying to start out doing something they have no idea how to do. And I kind of covered off this first point in previous slides in that an individual isn't the best person to teach themselves something that they don't know to start with. There's also the problem that they don't know what they don't know, and they are unconsciously incompetent. You know, so this is the very worst kind of situation to be in because not only do you not know what you're doing, but you have no idea of what you don't know, <laughs> right? So this is why a lot of newbies find it very frustrating when they're starting trading because they jump into trading and they start clicking buttons and it's not working for them, but they don't know why. Whereas traders with a little more experience will maybe make the same mistakes. However, they'll know that what they're doing is wrong and they'll be able to fix or amend it. The third point here is actually a real good point that I think that not a lot of people consider. Newbie traders almost always have a very bad plan. And I touch on this quite a bit in the beginner series that we put out for free on YouTube. When people come into the world of trading, they kind of let their imagination run wild as to the trajectory of their success and they start making plans accordingly. So for example, someone might be starting into the trading world with a couple of grand and they think, hey, you know, I need to trade penny stocks because I don't have a lot of money and I have a plan of becoming a millionaire kind of soon. So the best way to exponentially increase my chances of getting this done is by trading stocks that are under a dollar because that's all I can afford. You know, I'd look at a plan like that and I'd say, hey, this is a person who doesn't really know what they're talking about but they're mapping out a sequence for their trading career that is based on bad information or bad knowledge. So I often have traders who aren't part of the IU community come to me and say, hey Cam, I'm going to be a short seller specializing in OTC pump and dumps. And I'll kind of come back to them and say, hey, that's a interesting kind of plan, but are you aware that that market is pretty much dead now and hasn't really existed since, you know, 2012 or 2013. <laughs> and it's often a case that, you know, people set out these kind of plans and goals, which would normally be a good thing, but they're based on, you know, like I said, bad information, bad knowledge. So they often get in traders way while they're trying to progress. Nate, I'm pretty sure you've seen your fair share of some of these bad plans. Uh, do you want to give us a few examples of some you've heard yourself? It's funny you mentioned the OTCs and the penny stocks and just kind of buying them because they're cheap. And you know, one thing that I learned is cheap is always in in quotes because I came in the same way. You know, I had big eyes and big dreams and kind of was already planning my uh, my million dollar party when a particular triple zero name that I owned a million shares of went to a dollar. You know, I kind of already had my plan set. And, uh, you know, as soon as it went from zero, 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 one to zero, 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 three, I was already thinking we were on our way to a dollar. And obviously that just, you know, never happens. Uh, with that said, uh, there are many other uh, types of just really bad plans that people come up with. There's Countless times I've get DMs and um, Twitter messages and, and things like that on Instagram that are related to Forex or binary options and people um, just kind of think that they're just going to become this, this Forex trader and you kind of go back and forth with them a little bit and ask them a couple questions and they just don't have any idea. They have no process, no plan, no nothing. And they think that it's just really a, a choice that uh, you can make. Likewise with day trading, a lot of people will say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about quitting my job because I've decided to become a full-time trader. But what does that even mean? Too many times people try to formulate a plan prematurely and it always ends the same way. They end up losing their money hand over fist. So I think that it's very unfortunate that a lot of people are drawn in with the whole Instagram lifestyle, the perfect life, the shiny objects like the cars and 
Um, you know, look, you could trade from anywhere and do this and do that, and it's just so easy. But the reality is, is that none of this is possible until you have some type of consistency, some type of experience that you can actually make a educated decision to choose this as a profession after you've had experience, after you've gone through the motions, after you've kind of seen the other side. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that one. I really think that people need to get through the newbie and beginner and potentially even some of the intermediate stuff before they really start to formulate a plan for themselves in this game. So I guess it kind of makes sense to talk about the main thing that makes trading the hardest thing that newbies will ever do, which is the risk of the blow up due to no concepts of risk management. This is the thing that takes newbies out of the game more often than not before they really learn how to do what they're trying to do. So by not understanding the setups and not understanding the risk or the stop loss area that you should be taking on a trade, it really opens newbies up to the event of a margin call and a blow up where they end up seeing their account pretty much go to zero. When you ask newbies, why is trading so hard? They'll say, hey, you know, I keep on blowing up accounts. I just can't make it work. It's usually due to risk management. But I'm not going to discount the second last point here, which is most newbies do not understand uh, why certain setups work. You know, if they had some sort of understanding of how the setups work, they would potentially be getting involved in high quality trades that had positively geared reward to risk ratios. And they'd understand the mechanics behind these trades, which might put them into better trades and keep them out of trouble. Well, this is a bit of another case of not knowing what you don't know. Often newbies are coming to the market, they're clicking buttons, and it's essentially a coin flip on what they're doing here. And the last pointer I've got on this page is that newbies are often very focused on brokers, platforms, and gurus. You know, it doesn't matter if you have the best broker in the world with the cheapest commissions in the world. If you don't understand all of these points above, then you're going to still end up with a zero at the top of that account within a very short amount of time. That goes for the platform as well. You might have the most robust platform with the fastest executions, but if you, again, don't know what you're doing, then what's the point of it all? And the very last thing on this slide is often newbies are looking for a guru or some kind of holy grail system where they're able to make maximum amounts of money with minimal amount of effort. And this kind of relates back into the whole drawn in by money and dreams and the kind of idea that you're going to go from rags to riches with a very little amount of money and a very little amount of effort is, again, a recipe for disaster. We've seen a bunch of newbies burn out through other trading services, thinking that this kind of mentality is possible and uh, the way to success. So there's going to be a portion of people on this webinar who are actually stuck on pointers in this slide. And it means you're kind of stuck in the newbie mentality of trading. And that's okay because everyone needs to start somewhere. We're going to be going through some of the actionables that newbies can do in the second half of this webinar as we go through the solutions to some of these problems. So having now looked at newbie issues, let's have a look at issues facing beginner traders. And I suppose the way that I define a beginner trader is somebody who's maybe, you know, spent 100 hours going through content and reading books and watching YouTube videos to try and understand the trading subject matter a little more. So, you know, they've spent a little bit of time educating themselves, but as the saying goes, a little knowledge can often be a bad thing. And unfortunately for beginners, this is where they feel like they should start clicking buttons because uh, they're learning something that is exciting to them. They feel like they're picking it up and making progress and that it's somehow time to put all that new knowledge to work. And they open up an account, start firing trades and end up with the same outcomes that a lot of the newbie traders end up with. So as I said, you know, a beginner trader has a little more knowledge. So the second point here says, you know, they understand the principles of risk but they have no control over it. So it's kind of like they are consciously incompetent 
not unconsciously incompetent when it comes to this point. They kind of know what they should be doing in terms of risk, but they're not executing it correctly because, again, they don't have the experience to do so. The third point here is they still have a pretty bad plan. And I mention this because a lot of these beginner style traders retain that lofty expectation that they had as newbie traders because they haven't really been beat down by the market, so to say, yet. You know, the market hasn't really grounded them yet and uh, helped them understand that they really don't know anything at this stage of the game. And unfortunately, it often takes that humbling to really realize how little you know in the game and how much you have to learn. So Nate, I'm kind of curious, uh, can you remember or think back, I guess it's probably the best part of 15 years now to the first time you were really humbled by the market? Do you remember which ticker it was or, you know, the kind of story behind it? Absolutely. I still remember it to this day. It was... uh... It was not just a one day type of, you know, I made a bad trade and uh, I blew up. It was more of a, I'm going to bag hold this thing for six months because I'm right. And at some point it's going to work out. And I had held a stock named uh, Commerce Planet. I think it was CPLT back in the day from about a 2 220 average or something like that to about 30 cents or so is when I eventually blew out. Somewhere around 25 cents to 35 cents. And it ended up being nearly $2 a share loss on some some pretty massive size. And um, this was at a time when I had some great success um, and I had quite a bit of money in my accounts and it pretty much took a majority of my money uh, that I had. So it was, it was one of those types of uh, events where it was kind of a, what the heck am I doing? And is this really for me? And how do I come back from this? So since then, I try to obviously minimize the uh, the bag holding. That is one of the the main ones that I remember uh, that left a a pretty profound impact on my trading today. Unfortunately, I think uh, we've all had a trade like that. (laughs) So the second last point I've got here is that, you know, beginner guys usually understand bits about the setups, but it feels a lot like information overload. You know, this is all such foreign subject matter to them that they're trying to take on a whole heap of new information, but they're unable to internalize that new information yet and act on it in either a conscious or an unconscious kind of way, which obviously leads to no consistency in their game, which again can be catastrophic for their trading account. And often newbie traders and beginner traders are trying to do all of this still pretty much on their own. You know, they're really lacking guidance in what they're doing, or they're kind of using themselves as the teacher to try and guide them through, but playing teacher and student just doesn't work in this kind of environment. So I've got a little bit of tough love for you guys, because we really don't like to sugarcoat things here at Investors Underground. While I believe that a lot of you wouldn't really be suffering with the newbie issues that I covered on the previous slide. Because, you know, attending this webinar shows that you've already come, you know, so far in your trading education. But from spending all the time that I do with broader community outreach, answering non-members questions and getting an idea of where people who aren't in the Investors Underground community, you know, where they are at in their trading game, I would say that a lot of the people attending this webinar will be stuck somewhere on this slide. And there's one thing that I see often in the broader trading community that really leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth. You know, when I see other trading educators or other trading services that high five beginner's luck or try and shine a light for their own gain on one of their new members or students who seems to be having early success, It just really reinforces those unrealistic expectations and bad plans that can get in the way of aspiring traders' real success in the long term. So don't fall for that bullshit. You know, if you see someone who says, just signed up for service XYZ and made my whole tuition back in one trade, that's complete garbage. Where exactly are we to believe that that person is at in their trading progress? You know, are we to think that they signed up yesterday for a service and that service delivered so much value that they're through all these newbie and beginner issues? 
it's so transparent to see that the service is just trying to use that person's momentary success to try and perpetrate a narrative that this game is easy and the path to riches is by signing up for whatever they're selling. Anyway, so I'm going to move on to the intermediate issues now. And the people who aren't stuck on the beginning issues, I believe that we're going to come across some of the sticking points that they're facing in the next slide. So let's have a bit of a look at these intermediate issues. You know, intermediate traders have a better understanding of the setups, but develop some execution anxiety. This is because they know the perils of being a beginner and jumping into trades without the right conviction or knowledge, but they also at the same time know and understand high probability setups in a better way. So you've got a combination where people understand the subject matter better, but because they understand the subject matter, they are also extremely cautious because they know how easy it is to make mistakes in this game. And that creates an anxiety to go and click buttons. It's so interesting to me when I see traders who were really gunslingers when they were newbies and beginners transform into traders that are extremely gun shy and anxious about clicking buttons as I watch them turn from, you know, newbie and beginner traders into intermediate traders, which again is something that we'll need to work through in order to progress because having anxiety around every trade that you enter isn't a great recipe for success. The second pointer I've got here is, you know, with improved success, it can cause stubbornness and also confirmation bias. You know, the better that you get in this game, the more wins you throw up on the table, the more you feel like you know what you're doing and potentially the more you'll be stubborn to dig your heels in when you should actually be able to cut a trade off and know when you're wrong. You know, the fact that you've been right maybe 10 or 20 times in a row can really lead you to believe that you're going to be right this next time when really it was just supposed to be one of those losing trades that you took off for a small clip to your account rather than something that you dig your heels in, maybe double down because you've been right a handful of times on that kind of setup, which really ends up smashing your account instead of giving you a paper cut that you could probably have recovered from quite easily. So discipline and drawdown issues kind of falls into the point above, you know, with that extra success and increased stubbornness, sometimes you're a little more willing than you should to get taken for a ride by some of these stocks. You know, perhaps as you were a newbie and a beginner, you went for a couple of these rides and they turned out good in the end, even though it was a little bit of a roller coaster while you were on it. And it set up a bad precedent for your trading rules and trying to stick to them and play to your plan. Intermediate traders are often learning every day and adding to their trading arsenal. But this can often be frustrating to them because they've simultaneously got their bread and butter setups that are working okay and they're doing good at. But they're also venturing out into other kind of trades that they're not yet well practiced in which can be really frustrating in the short term, but eventually positive in the long term. So they're teething problems with trying out new things in the trading world. And the last pointer I've got here is capital preservation. And this is always going to be a tricky one for all levels of trading, but it presents a bit of a challenge to intermediate traders who have made it thus far in their trading career. In the back of their mind, they always know that they're one trade away from a blow up and without the right structure and set of rules, the trading capital that is keeping them in this game could evaporate up in smoke and that's always something that they're having to deal with and manage correctly. So as a classification for intermediate traders, I would say that you know a lot of the traders that are making money but are struggling with consistency will fall into this category you know the kinds of traders who are doing maybe two steps forward and one step back you know they'll make money for three weeks and then in one bad trade they'll give away two weeks of those gains They'll still be profitable for the month, you know, but the trading is plagued with, you know, discipline issues and issues around their rules and structure to their trading. 
Let's go to the next slide where I guess, uh, Nate, do you want to jump in and chat a bit about issues that advanced traders are often facing? There's quite a bit of issues that start when you are scaling and it's quite the psychological game. A lot of people just think that, you know, all you have to do is just act, you know, you just have to go from 1K to 2K or 2K to 5K or 10K or whatever it may be. And, you know, scaling is not just adding more size. There is so many different factors, including liquidity, uh, you know, what you normally might have been able to get out of if a particular price move happened, you no longer can. You have to adjust your entries and exits accordingly so that you can kind of anticipate the liquidity coming to then take you out of position. And it's much different than if you were just trading a couple hundred or a couple thousand shares. From a psychological perspective, you might be comfortable trading a particular size. And as you add on more size, you don't know how you're gonna actually react. You don't know if you're gonna be on the edge of your seat. You don't know if you're gonna break out in a cold sweat. You don't know how your body's going to react to a particular move. So when that happens, sometimes you actually don't know how you're gonna react until the move actually happens. And that's the scary part because are you going to actually do what your rules say to do? Are you going to stop out when you plan to stop out? Or are you gonna go into a freeze mode where you don't know what to do and you just kind of let the stock do its thing and you end up blowing an account? So that's one thing. And then, you know, you always have to have a, a battle with your own ego. A lot of traders really want to believe that they're right. And the thing about that is that sometimes being right is being wrong. And a lot of people have trouble kind of understanding that. And when you're actually wrong and you stop out and you accept that you're wrong, that was the right decision to make. So that's one thing that you're going to continually, you know, kind of have to go up against is your own ego and kind of uh, going against what you know, your, your ego wants you to do. You need to always kind of come back and ground yourself. Uh, one of the other things too is as you get uh, better and better and as you grow and grow and grow less people are willing to share information with you just because they feel like it's their own work their own stuff that they want to keep in-house it's their edge they worked on it yeah that makes a lot of sense you know i guess as your own skill level improves there are less people out there that are able to actually guide you or teach you something new so you have to be learning from a much higher caliber of trader. And those people can be a little more protective about their edge because that's what's paying their bills and making sure that, you know, they're making money in this game. I totally agree. Another thing is performance anxiety. Athletes go through it all the time. And, you know, sometimes you feel pressure to perform. Sometimes you start to think about something you need to pay for, something that you want to buy, and you start making wrong decisions and you kind of force yourself to make trades that you normally wouldn't make. And you're in the middle of a, a cold spell. You're in the, you're in the middle of a, a period where the trades are not there. So you start to get a little bit, a bit of performance anxiety, feeling the pressure that you need to perform. And at the end of the day, the biggest thing about trading is really just being able to trade and not have to trade, not have to push buttons. And that's really one big thing that separates, um, you know, traders from those that you know, kind of have this as a, a hobby. Another uh, big issue is comparing. Uh, it's very easy to compare. It's very easy to compare profits and, uh, you know, one thing that you need to understand is somebody is always going to make more. It's always the case. It always will be the case. On your best day, somebody always made more. And you just have to kind of accept that. <laughs> and then the last point here is that uh, you're going to go through ruts. Even the best traders can have the hottest 10-year streak. And all of a sudden, you just walk into this six-month cold spell of you just can't push the right button, you can't do anything right, and you really start to question everything. You lose your confidence. You lose everything that you used to have as 
uh, tool in your arsenal is no longer working and you got to think about okay am I living within my means am I spending too much am I am do I have too many outside pressures and you start to go through all these different things and it's totally normal for people to have ruts ideally they don't happen very often ideally they don't happen more than once a year if that at all but it is something that you need to prepare for and it's always a good thing to review where you're at in your own life and where you're buying patterns are and if you're buying things prematurely uh, if you're living too well uh, just because you never know when that rough patch may come and if you can't withstand that little rough patch then it's gonna make your life that much tougher so be cautious of that thanks Nate so as you can see there are issues at all levels and this is one of the reasons why trading will feel like the hardest thing that you've ever done at every level you can see different challenges so as you make more progress, it feels like you need to learn more and master different aspects of the game to proceed and continue to grow. I think it's really important to identify where you are. And that's the second point that I've got here in terms of where you really sit on the scale of, you know, newbie, beginner, intermediate and advanced. So you can recognize what you've accomplished so far, but also understand what you're going to need to go through in the future to really achieve success in your trading career. You know, in an effort not to be too pessimistic with, you know, all of these slides, trading is a very challenging game, but if you make it through, the reward is big. And, you know, different people wanna do different things with the time in their lives. For me, I like to travel and explore new places and learn new things. But that's for me as a single guy with, you know, no commitments and, no kids yet but when i visit nate for example his main priority is his family and hanging out with his wife and watching his kid grow up and although these are two completely different paths i guess trading has given us both the independence to free up the time in life to spend on the things that we love there aren't too many other careers in the world where you actually get that true independence So on this next slide, I've got a graphic so you can kind of plot out where you believe you're at in this game. And I want you to have a real honest conversation with yourself because trading isn't something where it's useful to try and, you know, fake it till you make it. You know, I think a lot of aspiring traders kind of want to be in the big boys club sooner than they're probably qualified for. So, you know, they're trying to post up P&Ls and get retweeted by their favorite guru. All of that stuff is not helpful to your trading career. The most helpful thing that you can do right now is understanding where you're at, understanding the challenges that are right in front of you, your sticking points, understanding the challenges at the levels above you and starting to try and work through those, which we're gonna do in the next few slides. So how can you progress? You know, you're looking at where you wanna be in this trading game and you're looking where you are and there's a gap of experience and expertise. We're gonna to attempt to fill in some of those questions on the next few slides. However, at Investors Underground, we spent the last 10 years answering these questions, creating content for members to digest and really digging deep into all of these sticking points and issues that traders have and workshopping them all in, you know, small groups or on the individual level, whether it's through webinars or via private message or the foundation, which is our DVD coursework series, 20 hours between textbook trading and tandem trader. So although I'm going to briefly go through and hit across the high level points, we probably spend a couple of hours on each of these points. If you go through the webinar archives and the beginner series and the DVD coursework, because this isn't simple subject matter. And I think that's one thing that we've really tried to hit home in this webinar. Trading is not easy. And we really understand that. And we really understand the struggles that new traders go through. You know, if there's one thing that you take away from this webinar, it's that not only have we been through this process ourselves, but we've helped thousands of other traders go through this process and we understand it inside out. And that really comes with a decade of experience in running a trading service. You know, we've had one of the wildest bull runs in the history of the world. 10 years of crazy gains, 
from the global financial crisis up until now. And at this kind of late stage in the cycle, you see a lot of different trading services pop up because money's flowing around and there are a bunch of services that seem to have popped up in the last 12 months that really want to cash in on the action. And one thing I seem to see all the time with these guys is, you know, a service that might be a few months old has a testimonial from someone who is already singing the praises when they've only been a member for one or two months. You know, this stuff to me is peak stupidity. Newbie and beginner traders are always hyped up about the trading process and learning. And I feel like a lot of services use that hype to promote what they're doing. Really think it's an irresponsible way to run a business. So this slide is how can you progress? Well, like I said, be realistic about where you are. Know how hard this game is and know the challenges that you're facing and also be aware of the challenges that you're going to face. And stick around for the next, you know, 20 minutes. We're going to be answering some of these challenges coming up now. So to the solutions to the newbie problems. Again, we obviously spend a lot of energy workshopping all of these issues because we know that it's stuff that traders commonly fall into the traps of. However, in the interest of giving you some actionable takeaways from this webinar. Let's go through these briefly and we can always workshop it further in webinars that we hold for the Investors Underground community. So if you think back to, you know, one of the first problems that newbies have, they're starting out doing something they have no idea how to do. So this is the point about you guys trying to be the student and the teacher at the same time. You know, you wouldn't try and teach someone else something that you didn't know how to do. You shouldn't really be trying to teach yourself something that you don't know how to do. So the solution I've got listed here is to surrender your ego and get some proper guidance. And obviously there's a number of places that you can get this from. We feel that in Investors Underground, we're best positioned to be providing this kind of guidance to all levels of traders. This solution isn't some kind of pitch for Investors Underground. It's just saying, look for people who have experience, who aren't necessarily trying to sell you something but are recommending places for you to learn from. So the second problem I have here is you don't know what you don't know, right? And the solution I've got here is that you need to understand that you don't know anything and travel accordingly. Don't try and be too clever at the start of your trading career. You know, I've got a little note here, Adam's story. So Adam is my younger brother. There's an eight year age gap between us. So I guess I try and give him guidance wherever I can possible in life. And he was telling me about a plan that he had already booked to go and ride a motorbike through Vietnam and do like a two week tour of the country. And at the time, you know, I had already visited a lot of Southeast Asia. I've got my motorbike license in Sydney. I like to do dirt bike riding and that kind of stuff. So I understood the perils <laughs> that are involved in not only driving on the roads in some of those countries, it's chaos, but riding a motorbike, uh, which is something that he had never done before, is fraught with danger. And when you combine the two things, you know, you're in a foreign country, you're riding a automobile that you don't have any experience on, it really would be a recipe for disaster. But because my younger brother hadn't been to Vietnam before and he hadn't ridden a bike before, he didn't really understand. It was a bit of a case of, you don't know what you don't know. So I pretty much had to beg and also bribe him not to go on this trip. We got him motorbike lessons in Sydney. I took him dirt bike riding with me a few times on the weekends and we delayed the trip until he's got a little bit more experience and he's set up in a better way to not end up under the wheels of a semi-trailer in a foreign country. But this is just a bit of a real life example that came to mind when I was talking about the solution to some of the problems. So the third problem here that we identified is newbies always have a very bad plan. And that's because they're trying to forecast their whole trading career before they really know anything about trading. So the solution here I've got is don't forward think too much when you don't have the ability to make a good plan. Now this might be a bit of an obvious one, but I'll use an example. You know, I'm really interested in aviation. Actually, one of the Investors Underground key members, G Dunner, is a private pilot and he kind of got me into the idea of getting my private pilot's license. And for me to try and make my own plan on this would be like me saying, hey, I wanna start 
flying in 737s because I've heard they've got the best safety equipment out of all the planes out there. You know, that's kind of what it sounds like when I hear all these plans from traders who tell me they're going to be Forex traders or OTC short sellers. I'm like, you don't know anything about trading yet. So how are you trying to make a plan around it? You know, in the example with the private pilot's license, the FAA have a roadmap in place where you start on a single engine small aircraft and then you progress along their timeline because they're the pros in this game. They know what it takes for a pilot to go from no knowledge to, you know, flying a commercial airliner. What I'm saying is that the path is well paved and your plan is often misguided and you should free your mind of that and kind of follow a schedule or plan that is tried and tested. But I understand that everyone wants to have goals in this game. And what I can say to that is just don't be drawn in by the dollars or drawn in by dreams. You know, be realistic about your expectations. Don't get suckered. Be very skeptical of people who have vested interests in this game who are telling you that trading is easy. Trading is going to be the hardest thing that you've ever done. <laughs> That's what we are called this presentation. If anyone is telling you otherwise, you got to think about the reasons that they might be trying to do that. The next two problems really have the same solution. The two problems are no concepts of risk management and no understandings of why setups work. So these are often the two reasons why newbies actually blow up. So the solution on this is learn, educate yourself. You're not ready to click buttons yet. Do not click buttons yet. And this is something I try and really reinforce with new traders. New traders often are really excited about getting into this business and they misplace that excitement or they channel it in the wrong way, wanting to click buttons in a brokerage instead of channeling it into making sure they've got the right foundation so that they really know what they're doing. And the last problem on this slide is, you know, newbie traders are always focused on brokers and platforms and gurus. And I think the reason behind this is because, you know, if they go out and buy themselves a computer with a bunch of screens, they feel like they're a step closer to being a real trader. It's something tangible that's within their power that they can go and do that will make them feel like more of a real trader. And this couldn't really be further from the truth. You know, there's no amount of screens or computers or platforms or brokers that can really help you learn the subject matter. No amount of this stuff is going to make you a better trader. And this is a really important fact. You know, we've got a friend in the trading community who runs a pretty funny Instagram and he gets questions like this all the time. You know, what's the best platform? Which screens do I buy? And he's like, look, I don't know. Don't be a herb. You know, it's really a example of a newbie kind of green trader who's asking these kinds of questions. It's not going to make you a better trader. Focused on learning and educating yourself. So let's have a look at the next slide. These are the solutions to the problems that beginner traders often face. So the first point to hear is beginner traders have some education, but a little knowledge can be a bad thing. You know, a beginner trader has been learning and they feel like they're making a lot of progress. So it can often be a trap that they want to go and try and put that into action before they're really ready. The solution here is to recognize your limitations and be conscious of what you don't know. And I think that we've kind of helped highlight some of this in this webinar. If you feel like you're in the beginner phase of your trading journey, as I believe I've correctly identified, you know, earlier in this piece, then maybe you're 20% of the way through your trading education. Think about how long that you've spent getting up to, you know, being 20% of the way through. You should know that you most likely have 80% to go. Now, that's not to discourage anyone here, as there are ways to fast track that 80% and really accelerate it with the right tuition and support network. But again, this is a pointer where you need to know where you're at and tread accordingly. You know, while I was waiting for my dirt bike to be prepped by the shop I bought it from, I spent about a week watching YouTube videos about how to ride and navigate different terrain. So I sat down on my bike quietly confident and the first time I spun the throttle, I kind of scared the shit out of myself. <laughs> and I think this was a situation where, you know, I had a little knowledge and I felt kind of confident, but it didn't match my competence level at all. The second pointer we've got here is that beginner traders often understand the principles of risk but they've got no control over it. So they know what risk is, but they don't know how to manage it yet. And the solution we've got here is a pretty obvious one. You know, 
keep position sizes small. As a beginner trader, you shouldn't be slinging size in any kind of way. You should always cut losses and potentially look to have hard stops, not only on your trade, but you know, if you do a max drawdown or if you have a maximum daily stop loss limit, those kind of rules can help you avoid a blow up. And the last part of this is paper trade when necessary. And I'm gonna say for anyone who hasn't been paper trading for at least a couple of months, you shouldn't be moving to a live account before you're showing consistency in a paper trading account. And if you're not showing consistency in that account, then you need to go back to the drawing board in terms of learning. The third point to hear is that a beginner trader still has a pretty bad plan. And I guess I kind of hammered this home in the last slide, but you should really look to rewire your brain on this. Your plan isn't good. You don't know how to make a good plan yet. And this also falls into, you know, the unrealistic expectations part, you know, it might be a little bit too early to be setting goals, but now that you understand the subject matter a little bit better, be more realistic about your goals, but also appreciate what you have achieved so far. If you've come 20%, identify that and also recognize that you've got 80% to go. The second last point that we got here is uh, you understand the setups, but it feels like information overload. And that's mostly because you're learning so much that your brain doesn't really have a chance to internalize all the lessons and make it something that you can tap and use unconsciously yet. So limit your setups and focus on keeping your trading strategy simple. You know, learn one or two patterns and make sure that you get good at that before trying to add any extra tools to your trading belt. And the last point on this beginner slide is that beginners often have no consistency and they feel like they're lacking guidance. And the solution that we've got to this is analyze your trades and narrow in on what's working. Understand your strengths and weaknesses and focus on avoiding situations that highlight your weaknesses. And in terms of guidance, seek high quality mentors that have a lot of experience, not only trading, but teaching in this game. So that brings us to our next slide, intermediate problems with solutions. So the first problem that we identified is intermediate traders have better understanding of setups, but often have some execution anxiety created through the roller coaster of the newbie and beginner phases of their trading career. The solution on this is to focus on main areas of strength and take smaller positions when necessary. And I can't be a bigger advocate for that second pointer, take smaller positions. You know, when traders ask me, hey, I uh, always get stopped out and the trade ends up doing exactly what I thought, or I'm always getting chopped around in, you know, the price action that's less clear. Well, if you trade, let's say half the size and you open up your stops a bit, you'll be risking the same amount because you know, you've know you got a smaller position, but a stop that's further away. It can not only reduce trading anxiety, but it can also keep you in the position so that the bigger picture might play out and you stay in the trade instead of getting chopped around. The second point that we've got here is that improved success can lead to stubbornness and confirmation bias. And the solution we have here is that Mr. Market is always right. You need to stay humble in this game. Just because a trade pattern has worked 19 times in the past doesn't mean that the 20th time is going to be the same. And potentially the 20th time was the time that you were supposed to eat the loss and be wrong on it because not all high probability setups work all the time. If you dig your heels in on that 20th trade, that'd be the trade that wipes out all of the gains of the 19 trades that you did really well on. The third point that we have here is, you know, intermediate traders often have discipline and drawdown issues. And this is often because bad behavior has gone unpunished through maybe the newbie and beginner phases where a trader may have gone on a bit of a roller coaster ride on a couple of trades. However, it ended up coming good in the end but it only takes one of those roller coaster rides to not come good for a margin call or a full account blow up. The solution to this is be patient in your trading career. Don't start trading like a hotshot after a few trades. I also think that 
traders sometimes fall into a trap of the threshold that scares them during drawdowns becomes bigger and bigger each time they have a bigger drawdown. So a newbie trader might be okay with a $100 drawdown. And let's say they broke their rules and ended up letting a trade go $200 against them. Well, suddenly that's their new threshold for pain. And this can get out of control when you move up stakes in the game because you don't feel that same sweat at the smaller drawdown levels anymore. I've seen it a lot with traders who are scaling up where their drawdown size becomes progressively out of control. The second last pointer we have here is that you're learning every day and adding to your trading arsenal, which is a good thing, but that's causing teething problems while you're doing it. And the solution here is you really need to understand what your bread and butter is and understand which setups are A plus to you. Understand which setups you're still trying to learn and you should vary your size and risk accordingly. You know, just because you may have stepped up your game on some setups and you're willing to risk, let's say, $1,000 a trade because those setups have proven to be right more often than not, it doesn't mean that you should use that $1,000 risk on a setup that you're still trying to get good at or still trying to learn. And the last pointer is, is that capital preservation is always a challenge for all traders. You know, your solution here is to take smaller positions, have patience use stops, and only really take those trading setups that you know to be high probability setups that you're good at, which may result in you actually trading less rather than more. I really think a combination of that will be good for your trading in the long term. 100%. So I've been talking for a hot minute now. <laughs> I'm going to let Nate chat a little more about the advanced problems and solutions slide. So let's have a look at that now. Advanced solutions. Uh, first point to hear is about scaling. Take it away, Nate. Scaling. We talked about how it's very easy to just kind of add, 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 or instead of 500 shares, use 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, so on and so forth. And it's not just that simple. It's not about just adding more size. Because as we discussed, there's a lot of psychological things that come along with it. How are you going to react when a stock starts to squeeze against you and now you have double the size that you're used to? Will you still react in the same manner, emotionless, and stop out when you're supposed to? Or will you start to turn into a situation and question yourself that saying, uh, am I just freaking out because I have a little bit more size? If I was a smaller size, would I have held? And all of these things need to be avoided. So typically, whenever I am scaling, one of the best things to do to protect your average is to pretend that you're not in the stock. Pretend that you don't have a position yet because so many times we can just kind of add, add, add to winner because it just, it's easy. Our average is still, you know, up, uh, relative to where we, where it's trading now. And, you know, it's, it's just easier just to kind of hit the bid if you're short or, or keep on adding if you're long. But the reality is, is you can quickly ruin your average. And then if the inverse move happens, now you've got all this size and you have no padding. So what I do is I pretend that I'm not in any particular name and then I say, okay, where would I enter this stock if I had zero position? And normally I would not be chasing, right? I'd be looking for a better entry. So that's what I do and I pretend I'm not in and I start to find the entries that I would had I not had any entries to begin with. So. That's one thought process. Then the uh, second biggest thing is to really uh, focus on if you do scale up and it's not doing what you thought, you need to scale back down. You need to always be cautious and aware of whether or not the trade is working as you expected or if it's starting to reverse the move because as you start to trade more size, the moves are going to be you know, much more whipsaw-ish and really you know, grind that PL in, in ways that you may not be used to. Second problem was ego. And, you know, no matter what, the market's always got the final say. We can be on the hottest streak. And the second that you put down your guard, the second that you ignore the fact that 
a company needs to raise money. You ignore the fact that it's ran 500%. You, you ignore the fact that it's been in a downtrend all day. The market's going to humble you. So it's always good to recheck where you're at, how you're trading. Are you exhibiting too much risk for any given trade? And always recheck that dial kind of is my conviction level too high for the risk and does it all check out? And if it all checks out, then great. But many times you'll find out that you know, it probably doesn't and you probably do need to recheck your size relative to, yeah, you might have had a very high conviction before, but the trade is not doing what you thought it was going to do and therefore your size is too big for your current conviction level. So that's always a good way to think about things and just know that the next uh, humbling trade is right around the corner the second that you let go of your guard. Guidance. Talked a little bit about this before where you know sometimes as you go up the chain and as you get better and better, people are starting to withhold information that they would have otherwise shared. They start to realize their edge. They start to realize uh, that you know all this work that they've done is actually more beneficial to them to hold it inside rather than put it out to the masses. So the key here is to really find a good network of traders that fits your style with traders that have all different types of niche markets that they trade maybe not all the same for example I'm more of a momentum trader I'm very good at kind of sensing the tape and understanding when things are heavy gonna break out when they could run when they couldn't and kind of anticipating range however some of the guys that I trade with that's not where their their strength is their strength is in the numbers fundamentals, the company's story, bio, things like that. So when we start to jive and put ideas together and work together, there's a much better benefit. Had we all been momentum traders, tape readers, things like that, then there's a good chance that we probably want to keep the information inside. So really surround yourself with others whose strengths are better than you in areas that you're weak and surround yourself with people where your strengths are better than where they are at. And that's always going to make sure that your your team, your group is always sort of on this on the right path towards not necessarily profitability but just towards a common goal. We talked about uh, performance anxiety. And you know, this is something that you'll always probably face here and there and and you know, anytime that you put pressure on yourself to perform it's not good because you're no longer just trading. You need to just be able to come to the market and trade. Anytime that you're looking at, I have to do this, I've got to hit this, I've got to work on this, and you, you line up all these different have to do's, you're going to start to pull away from what you're good at. And it's part of the game. You just have to know when to press when you're hot and when to pull back when you know, you're not necessarily nervous, but when you're on a cold streak when you know certain things that are out of your control are happening uh, and that's all includes position sizing ego and unrealistic goals the more outside factors that you can eliminate the better you're going to be the more clear head you're going to have one big problem is comparing to others you have to eliminate this uh, a lot of the guys that i talk to we don't talk about profits every trader that i know that has really made it really well. A few talk about their big wins sometimes because they need the high fives. They also talk about their big losses because they need to pick me up. But on the daily, it's not really something that's talked about. I'd rather, and the guys that I surround myself with, for the most part, we talk about the trade itself and sometimes the size. It's not a measure of who made more or profits, P&L, any of that kind of stuff. but I get a lot out of understanding the size that somebody else may trade on something and wonder, hmm, you know, what did I miss on that? I, maybe I could have traded a little bit more size. Maybe I was outsized. So I get a lot from comparing the size in which, you know, any particular trade I may have traded. But when you start comparing P&L and things like that, like I've said, and you've seen me say many, many times before, somebody will always make more, no matter what. And it's going to do nothing except make you discouraged. You're going to have a great 5K day and somebody's going to make 10K day. And all of a sudden, you're going to not feel like you did a good job. So you need to always remember that 
the only competition is you. You need to compete with yourself. You need to focus on you and always keep that in the forefront. Last but not least, ruts. No trader is immune to periods of poor performance. Sometimes you won't have a rut for 10 years. Other times you might have one every six months, every year, every couple years, whatever it may be. It could come at any time. But the key is to be able to identify it and not start to push when you're in a rut, not start to try to force yourself out of the rut because that's when the issues start. So really the key is to wait for that period to kind of settle, wait to get a better read on the markets, and then start to get back to how you were trading before. It's part of the game, and I think the best, the best thing or the biggest solution to prevent stress during ruts is to always live below your means. If you're the guy that wants the big house, the car, the whatever it may be, that is going to increase your nut per month to something ridiculous, just know that during a period of poor performance, a pullback, whatever it may be, there's going to be that much more pressure on you to be able to keep up with your lifestyle. So always think about that and always live below your means. One, I would almost say, uh, bonus kind of problem is that when people make bad decisions and it works, it reaffirms that bad decision as good. So you see a lot of people trading these low float stocks that go from one to five to eight, and then they end up going to 15 or 20. And somebody made money buying it at 11 and selling it at 15, buying it at 16 and selling it at 22. Huge chases, huge, just very poor entries, but they were rewarded for it. So the key takeaway was not that they chased it, they got lucky, it squeezed out, and they exited. The key takeaway is they were right, they did the right thing, this was the proper trade, and so then the next time it happens, they're that much more confident, they're going to do it again, and they end up getting absolutely smoked into potentially an offering or some type of trap where it's only then where they realize that, oh yeah, maybe maybe that was a bad trade. So I think that this kind of goes back to the dial that I was talking about and just always question yourself whether or not the entry was proper, whether or not this is a A plus type setup or whether or not you're just kind of throwing darts at the board and hoping that one hits. And most often you'll realize that you're throwing darts at the board and hoping one hits. So be very, very cautious of getting that confirmation from a very, very bad decision and thinking that it's actually good. Thanks, Nate. That was awesome. So we've got a lot of subject matter to cover over the next seven lessons in this series. We're going to be looking in more depth at trading psychology. We're going to be getting some insights into different strategies from some of the other key members in the Investors Underground trading community. And myself and Nate are going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into short and long setups and also have a look at stuff like VWAP and volume analysis and some slightly more technical stuff that really wasn't suitable for the beginner series. So I often get the question, you know, hey Cam, what's my next logical step in this all? And I truly believe that the most crucial way for traders to progress in their trading careers is via education, tuition, networking, and being part of the right trading community. If there's one thing that you take away from this webinar, you should really know that Investors Underground understands the struggles that new traders go through as they're trying to navigate the trading world. And sometimes I read comments about our service where, you know, people might say Investors Underground is more for intermediate and advanced traders. And that's partially true. You know, we do have more intermediate and advanced traders in our trading community than any other services that I know. But that's because we brought them out of being newbies and beginners and we've progressed them along in their trading careers to intermediate and advanced traders. Now, just because the skill level in the room is higher than most services, it's really because we've inched them along and helped them in the pursuits that we don't have as many newbie and beginner traders in the community. We want to do the same for your trading. We want to take in traders who have 
you know, made it to the 20% themselves. And we want to give them the other 80% that it's going to take for them to be successful in the game. If you feel like you're getting value from the stuff that we're putting out, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Come on board and see how much we really offer the Investors Underground community. Remember, you can reach out to me with any questions you have via email, but I'd really like to chat with you all in the Investors Underground chat room. That's where I spend the majority of my time. All right, guys, that's a wrap from us. Looking forward to hearing from you all.